Hello, my name is Ronan Suryani, and right now we're going to talk about the Chapter 1 Introduction to Statistics. So, what is statistics? It is a collection of methods for planning experiments, obtaining data, and then analyzing, interpreting, and drawing conclusions based on the data. So, what is a data? Data are characteristic or information, usually numerical, that are collected through observation. In a more technical sense, data is a set of values of qualitative or quantitative values about one or more persons or objects, while a datum, a singular of data, is a single value of a single variable. So what is a variable? A variable is a characteristic or condition that can change or take on different values. Most research begins with general questions about the relationship between the two variables or a specific group of individuals. So what is a population? The entire group of individuals is called the population. For example, a researcher may be interested in the relation between class size, which is the variable 1, and academic performance, which is the variable 2, for the population of third grade children. So what is a sample? Usually, populations are so large that a researcher cannot examine the entire group. Therefore, a sample is selected to represent the population in a research study. The goal is to use the result obtained from the sample to help answer questions about the population. So from, so from the population, all of the individuals of interest to the sample selected from the population to the individuals selected to participate in the research study to the result from the sample are generalized to the population. It is a cycle which keeps on repeating. So what are the types of variables? Variables can be classified as discrete or continuous. Discrete variables such as class size, it is consists of indivisible categories and continuous variables such as time or weight are infinitely divisible to whatever units a researcher may choose. For example, time can be measured to the nearest minute, second, half second, and etc. So, discrete variable, it is a variable whose value is obtained by counting, for example, number of planets around the sun, number of students in a class. It is a range of the specified number is complete. It assumes a distinct or separate value. Continuous variable. It is a variable whose value is contained by measuring, for example, number of stars in space, height or weight of the student in a particular class.
scale is an ordered series of equal size categories. Interval measurements identify the directions and magnitude of a difference. The zero point is located arbitrarily on an interval scale. Four, ratio scale. It is an interval scale where a value of zero indicates none of the variables. Ratio measurement identify the direction and magnitude of differences and allow ratio comparison of measurements. So, nominal scale used for naming variables in no particular order. For example, I color interval scale used for numerical variables with no equal intervals of the same distance, for example, time. Ordinal scale is for variables in one order, but the difference between is not determined. For example, 1, happy, 2, neutral, 3, and happy. Ratio scale is for variables on a scale that have measurement intervals, for example, weight. So, what is a correlational study? The goal of correlational study is to determine whether there is a relationship between two variables and to describe the relationship. A correlational study is simply observe the two variables as they exist naturally. Descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics are methods for organizing and summarizing data. For example, tables are graphs are used to organize and descriptive values such as the average score are used to summarize data. A descriptive value for a population is called a parameter. A descriptive value, for example, is called a statistic. Inferential statistics. Inferential statistics are method for using sample data to make general conclusions about the population. Because the sample is typically only a part of the whole population, sample data provide only limited information about the population. As a result, sample statistics are generally imperfect representatives of the corresponding population parameters. Sampling error The discrepancy between a sample statistic and its population parameter is called sampling error. Defining and measuring sampling error is a large part of inferential statistics. Different random sampling. Probability sampling involves a random selection allowing you to make strong statistical inference about the whole group. Probability sampling involves non-random selection based on convenience or other criteria allowing you to easily collect data. Sample size. The number of individuals you should include in your sample depends on various factors, including the size, variability, the population, and your research design. There are different sample size calculators and formulas depending on what you want to achieve with statistical analysis. Simple random sampling. In a simple round of sample, every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected.
company has offices in 10 cities across the country, all with roughly the same number of employees in similar roles. You don't have the capacity to travel to every office to collect your data, so you use your random sampling to select three offices. These are your clusters. So that's all for now. Hope you learn a lot with chapter one. Thank you and goodbye.